What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on with multi-product analysis. We're now going to do another example. So a store sells TVs and laptops each price at $1,600 and $900 respectively. The TV and laptop have variable cost ratios of 40% and 35% respectively. Fixed costs are $820,000 and the company expects to sell 800 TVs and 1,200 laptops this upcoming year. And we got three parts to this question here. So part A, we got to prepare a pro forma contribution margin income statement. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, erase all of this. Hopefully uh, you either wrote this down. I also have this in lecture notes that you could print out on my website. If you're watching it on YouTube, you can uh, click the link in the description box. So pro forma contribution margin income statement. So what I'm going to actually do for this company is they got two products. So I'm going to create two columns, one for the TVs, one for the laptops, and then I'm going to total the numbers for the company as a whole. So with a contribution margin income statement, we start with the sales. What would the sales for the TVs be? Well, they're selling 800 TVs, each price at 1,600, right? The TVs are priced at 1,600, laptops are 900. So 1,600 times the 800 TVs, we would end up with 1,280,000 of sales for the TV portion. Laptops, 900, and you're selling 1,200 of them. So when you multiply those numbers, you would end up with 1,080,000. And then we could total these up. So this would be 2,360,000. And then what? What's next? So then we have the variable costs. And notice we're not given the variable cost straight away. In this uh, example, we're given the variable cost ratios. And so to get the variable cost, so I wrote down the numbers here, you would just take the sales number and multiply it by that variable cost ratio for the product. So for the TVs, the variable cost ratio is 40%. So you would take 1,280,000, multiply it by 0 0.4, you get 512,000. And then to get this 378,000, you would take this 1,080,000, multiply it by 0 0.35. And then for the company as a whole, you would total these up, you would end up with 890,000. And then the sales or the revenue minus the variable cost, that gives us the contribution margin, right? So 1,280,000 minus 512,000, these are all expenses. So I'm gonna put them in brackets. We would get a contribution margin here of 768,000. Here, this would be 702,000. And then over here, we would end up with what? 1,000,000, um, 470,000. Sorry for the delay there. Had to do some mental math. So 1,470,000 in contribution margin for the company as a whole. And then we got the fixed cost of 820,000. Now notice the fixed costs, they're not tied to a particular product. So this 820,000, that's for the company as a whole. So this is gonna be 800 and 20,000 right there. And so when you subtract this, you would end up with what? 650,000 of income. It could be operating income. Let's just call it, uh, let's actually just call it profit. Your textbook might call that different things. I'm just gonna call it profit. And so that's it. That is the contribution margin income statement for this firm. We split it up in terms of the products. And then remember the, um, the fixed costs were for the company as a whole. Sometimes you'll have 
like committed fixed costs to certain products that you could put here. And then you may have fixed costs for the company as a whole. Um, but in this question, we just got fixed costs for the company as a whole, 650,000, that is the income or the profit. Moving on to part B, keeping the same sales proportion, how many units of each, when they say uh, each here, they mean each product, so TVs and laptops, must be sold to achieve a profit of $1,458,500. So very similar to the question we did before in a previous video. So first thing we got to figure out is what is the simplified sales mix or sales proportion. Remember, so sales proportion, sales mix, they both mean the same thing. And remember, the sales mix is always based on the number of units. So we got, uh, let's figure out what our proportion is, TVs to laptops. So we got 800 TVs and then we got 1200 laptops. We're told that that proportion is going to stay constant and so we just have to reduce this. Notice we could divide both by 100, we would have eight to 12. We could divide both of these by four, so then we'd have two, two, three. So for every two TVs that are sold, there are three laptops sold. And then if you remember, part two is we have to get the packaged contribution margin. So what we got to do is sell this here, or pretend we're selling this as like one package. Right? Instead of just the TV separately, laptop separately, we're selling in one package, two TVs, three laptops. And uh, we're going for a target profit here. So just um, on the side here, if you remember the number of units to sell for a target profit, what's the formula? It's the fixed cost plus the target profit over the unit contribution margin. So that's the formula we're going to be using. And we just got to get this unit contribution margin here. And because we're dealing with multiple products, we got to get a packaged contribution margin. So what I'm actually going to do first is figure out what is the unit contribution margin for each of these um, products. So we got the TV and we got the laptop. Could have maybe done it in part A as well. In part A, we looked at it as a total with these uh, 800 TVs, 1200 laptops. Now we're going to look at it on a per unit basis. So the price, let's say the sales on a per unit basis, 1,600, and then we got 900. Then we're going to have the variable cost, and we're given ratio, so 40% of 1,600, that gives us what? Uh, 640. And then 35% of 900, that would give us 315. And so now what we can do is we can get the unit contribution margin per product. So per TV, per laptop. So with the TV, when you subtract those, you would end up getting 960. Over here, we would get 585. You can actually check these numbers with your contribution margin income statement in part A. So you could take 960, multiply it by 800, take 585, multiply it by 1200, and you should get the same numbers in the contribution margin row that you got in part A for each of the products. So from here, what we do is we got to now get a packaged contribution margin. And notice that in one package there are two TVs, so we multiply by the TV contribution margin plus three laptops multiplied by the laptop contribution margin, 585. And when you do that, you would end up getting $3,675. So that there is the contribution margin for one package that we are selling. And then once you have that, we can go back to that general formula for uh, target profit. So I'm going to erase some stuff here. Let's keep this sales mix actually. So two to three, this is TVs, laptops. Okay. 
And so now uh, what we do is bring back that formula. So number of units, remember this is the number of package units in this question because we're going to have the total profit plus the, or the target profit rather, plus the fixed cost over the package unit contribution margin. And so now we just have to fill everything in. So what's our target profit? $1,458,500 plus that fixed cost, 820,000 over that package unit contribution margin, which we figured out was 3,675. And so when you do that calculation, you would end up with 620 units, actually 620 packages, let's say, right? 620 of these packages, but they are asking how many units of each product must be sold. So if this here is one package, we got to sell 620 packages. So what we do to get the number of TVs, we just take the number of packages and how many TVs are in each package? Two. So we would have 1240. So that's how many TVs have to be sold. And then the number of laptops would be 620 number of packages. There's three laptops per package. So 1860. Right? And that's the answer to part B. So 12, uh, 1,240 TVs must be sold, 1,860 laptops must be sold. And then finally, part C, to finish off the question, the store finds that changing the sales mix to 900 TVs and 600 laptops, fixed costs can be reduced by 200,000, should they proceed. So should the store proceed? And the way you do this kind of question is you basically have to compare the contribution margin income statement we made in part A, which was based on these numbers, with a contribution margin income statement with these numbers, then compare the profits. So if you remember from part A, the profit we found was 650,000. And so if we could get a higher profit doing um, this new sales mix with these new fixed, uh, these new reduced fixed costs, then we would proceed. But if the profit's gonna be lower, then we don't proceed, we keep the original. So you would do the exact same thing as in part A, just with these new numbers. And I'm actually just gonna start with the contribution margin. So I'm not gonna put the sales and the variable costs. You can do that if you want. But because we have that contribution margin per unit that we found in part B, I could just take the, uh, so let's make some columns. I could just take the TVs and the laptops. So the unit contribution margin for the TVs was 960 and multiply it by 900. And that would give us 864,000. And then with the laptops, I could take the 600 laptops, multiply it by 585 which was the contribution margin for the laptops in part B per unit. So 600 times 585, that would give us 351,000. Then we could have a total for the company over here. And when you total these up here, you would end up with 1,215,000. So that's the contribution margin row. Again, you could put the revenue, the variable cost row if you like. I just put the contribution margin and then I got the fixed costs. Now the fixed costs, we're told they're gonna to be reduced by 200,000. So from 820, if you reduce it by 200,000, your new fixed costs are gonna be 620,000. So what's that profit gonna be now? Well, when you end up doing this calculation, you would end up with 595,000. So that would be the profit with this new sales mix with these new fixed costs. And notice that that profit, it's lower than this one. 
So should they proceed? Answer is no, because the profit is, uh, is lower. And yeah, that's it for the question. So uh, different kind of question before we did break even. Now we worked a little bit with target profit in part B and then making some contribution margin income statements with multiple products.